Hi, I'm Alex zaharov Royt, and you're watching me on Blorge.com. Now, in the next couple of months, perhaps even less, we're going to see the new iPhone 3.0. Already the iPhone 3.0 uh, software, the, the firmware, which is in beta, has been leaked out to uh, developers and to those who are friends of developers, and there are people already today, you know, weeks before it's going to be made available to the public, already running the iPhone beta 3 software. Now, what the, that software allows you to do is to do the cut and paste that Apple hasn't been offering, and there are many other little advances and features, over a hundred new features, even things like Bluetooth stereo headsets, which were never possible before. And there's hints about more voice activation and, and you know, other software features that have been pretty well documented. You can go online, you can even watch Apple's uh, one and a half hour video uh, detailing all the iPhone 3.0 you know, features. But the key question for iPhone lovers is what the new iPhone hardware will be like. Will it be thinner? I mean, can you make a phone even thinner than the, this is the original iPhone 2G, the, the 3G version is thinner still. Will they make it thinner? Will they put in some sort of slide-out keyboard, which seems quite unlikely? A lot of the speculation centers around there being a 3.2 megapixel camera with video on the back of the iPhone, and strangely, a 5 megapixel camera on a future iPod Touch. And that's because Apple loves to do this segmentation. You know, you, you have the iPhone with something not quite as good as the iPod Touch, so a lot of people will feel compelled to buy both. Apple has this reality distortion feel that makes you want to buy, if you're a fan, everything they create. Now one of the other big questions about the iPhone 3.0 is will it have a new multitasking chip from a company called PA Semi that Apple purchased, which did these PAL PC chips. And if Apple can put a more powerful chip inside, then we might be able to get rid of the bugbear of no true multitasking. So the pressure is on for Apple and Steve Jobs to deliver an iPhone that knocks our socks off, like the original iPhone did, and the pressure is also on for Steve Jobs to deliver some kind of an iPhone Pro or a Mac tablet that is like a, a larger iPhone, but with full multi-touch and, you know, some sort of a keyboard that is a netbook competitor that won't cost two or $3,000 and will compete very nicely with the other netbooks on the market. So there will be a lot of speculation over the next couple of uh, months, but I'm very excited that an iPhone 3.0 is going to be here very soon with many of the features that should have been there from day one.